So if if you could tell uh, any of our listeners about mm -hmm. the Christmas ringer, mm -hmm. what would you want to tell them? I would tell them that it's a, a movie about a family um, when sometimes someone might lose their way in the family and might even come back for ulterior motives, but then find themselves once again and are welcomed back. Um, like it's a true story of redemption and love. It's about love and redemption. And if you want something that's going to make you feel good, um, then check out the Christmas ringer because I think you're going to love it. And if you want to hear some good singing, check it out. <laughs> Hey, 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 welcome to a special holiday episode of The Couch with Rob Fields. I'm your host, Rob Fields, and today we have a returning guest, all right? So first of all, let's start this round of applause, all right? Let's start it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's start the round of applause, all right? So this round of applause is for an individual who has faced the storm head on, all right? No rain jacket, all right? And now... She is out of the storm. The strike has been lifted. She can talk that talk. And she's also representing today as Miss Anne from the Christmas classic, the Christmas ringer on BET Plus. Ladies and gentlemen, give big hand claps to Arisha. Connor, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Welcome back. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for having me again. I appreciate you so much. Of course, we had to make this one a <laughs> Christmas edition. Okay, snowfall, Christmas trees, Rudolph is in the house. Yeah, we had to make this a special one because the Christmas ringer is live. All Ooh, right? Yes, yes. So, and I'm so, you used to, so, so first of all, tell me how you're feeling right now. You know, I'm feeling really good. You know, the strike ended and I think actors, any actors that are in the union were ecstatic because now, you know, we're able to uh, talk about projects that we worked on, projects that are coming up, projects that we were working on during the strike, but we couldn't say anything. Um, yeah, we're, we're able to do that now. Uh, the, la so the last time that... Yeah, the last time that we talked, you held it down, all right? So you kept your oath to all the, the actors and writers worldwide. <laughs> and you were itching to share some, share some information, but you held true to it. And I tried to support you in that, even though I was, I was itching as well. But, yeah, I'm, I'm so happy. So how did, how did that go down Like when you got the information about the strike? Did your agent call you or did, like, one of your um, actor colleagues hit you up like, Girl, you know what? Did you see what just happened? How did, how did it happen? Well, when we when we're on strike, you know, uh, at first the vote has to be um, accepted by the board, SAG's board, and then after it passes SAG's board, it comes down to all of the members of SAG to be ratified. Um, and so we got we get like these little uh, note cards, and it has like a special number on it. And so we go online. We uh, they also released um, parts and pieces of the contract, and uh, so we we voted on it. And we knew that the voting was due by it was like a Tuesday. I don't remember the date, but it was on a Tuesday. And so I was look I was just looking. Uh, you know, after I think it was due like at five o'clock p.m. And so then I was just looking. I was just looking. And so later on that night, I want to say it was between 11 and 12, they announced. And I knew because I was looking. I was always online. Um, you know, Variety it came out through Variety and uh, Entertainment News. Any, you know, any news outlet that was following it, it was released that way. And then SAG also sent all of the members an email. So it was like, yes, yes, the strike is over. <laughs> yeah. So I'm in the in the middle of it. Did you really feel like it would end? Did you or, or did you think this thing was going to really kind of just push along uh, for a long time? I thought it would not end until next year. I was looking for it to, to go until at least like January, February. That's what I was prepared for. Um, so when, um, when it was going through, because, you know, there are a lot of people who were, you know, for 
uh, uh, the the various parts and pieces of our contract. And there were a lot of people who were still against it. You know, there were some hashtags out there, um, vote no, you know what I'm saying? But everybody, you know, you just have to read it for yourself and think about how, you know, the different parts and pieces affect you as a person. And like one of the biggest things was the AI, of course. And um, I just thought about how it how it would affect me. And I voted, you know, I voted in a way that was, you know, positive. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, yeah, we here, we here. I got you, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> so if, if you could share some of the pertinent pieces that came to pass, you know, and, and something that will positively affect you guys moving forward. Well, our um, our residuals, like percentages. So one of the big things was um, streaming companies. Uh, the residuals for that are different from like major networks like ABC, NBC, because three years ago when they did the contract before, the streaming services weren't as big. So now it's like, OK, streaming services are, are going crazy now. A lot of you know, a lot of people don't even have cable like we don't have cable. We have streaming services. Yes. So how we as actors be compensated um, in a fair way that kind of matches, you know, what, what was happening with the major networks. And I think that's that's where the big fight happened, because of some of the people with these streaming services, the owners of the streaming services was like, nah. Um, <laughs> and so that's that why. It, right, right. It was going so <laughs> long. But um, just increased uh, residuals for um, guest stars, co-stars. Um, certain things were in place for series regulars on, on shows or leads in movies as well. And before there was, um, a lot of companies were taking the likeness of people and saying, you know, we're not compensating you for that. Back, uh, background actors, regular actors, we're going to take a 360 degree. We're going to, um, use it. We're going to use you one day and then we're just going to use your, your image for perpetuity with no compensation. So I do like that they added that. That compensation because AI is a thing. Look, me and my husband just watched this movie Creator about AI. It was so good. I just want to throw that in there. But I, AI is a thing that that is new and it's powerful. So we have to figure out ways to um, to work with it so it's not working against us. So I think the first step in that is to be compensated um, for you know if someone uses my voice or someone uses my face. I should be compensated for that. You know, that's not free. <laughs> and so yeah, before, yeah, before it was like, you know, you're not going to get compensated. So I, I did. I like that. But I think there, there's a lot more more conversations that need to happen in regards to AI and what that means for creatives as a whole. Um, so going forward, I believe that that was part of it as well. There'll be different. Um, they'll meet um, in different before the next time our our contract comes up, there'll be meetings to talk about what's going on with AI and, you know, what we need to do. Mm -hmm. So we'll prepare mm -hmm. for the next time. All right. So listen, we, we got the strike talk out of, out of the way. <laughs> Cause it's now a part of history yeah. <laughs> it is not the present. So Miss Arisha Connor Fries, you get to talk that talk. Can you please tell the people some of the notable roles you've had uh, oh. Over this time, could you please? Because last time we didn't really get to dive into that part of things, right? right? So just let the people know. Well, I'll tell you the very first um, co-star role that I had, which was recurring, was on Swagger, um, which is streaming on Apple uh, TV Plus. Uh, it's in two seasons. It, it did not get picked up for a third season, but you can still watch season one, season two. I'm in season one with mm -hmm. um, with Ice Cube's son. Oh my gosh. Why is the name O'Shea Jackson Jr. And um, it, it's a great show. They had some really good people in there. Orlando Jones was on it this season, as well as Miles Mussenden, some really uh, great people. And I did uh, four episodes of that. And the next thing I booked was uh, Dope Sick, which is starring, led by Michael Keaton, um, who I played. All of my scenes were with Michael Keaton because I was the nurse in his office. I was like the nurse and like the office manager as well. Mm -hmm. Is an Emmy Award winning show now. Um, he actually won an Emmy for Best Actor, and I feel like a little piece of that Emmy is mine, you know? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm trying to give him what he needs, you know? That's it, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. 
And then after that, um, I got a chance to work with my favorite actor, Samuel L. Jackson, in The Last Days of Ptolemy Gray, which also starred um, Dominique Fishback, who just finished um, Transformers. And she she was also what Swarm, like that was a big thing for a while. She was like yeah. the big Swarm. Um, and she's just sweet. At, they're just And for, to be able to work with Samuel L. Jackson for me was like a dream because he is, he's my favorite actor. Um, and then I've done The Resident, uh, which is uh, was canceled, unfortunately. It was out there for, I want to say, set six or seven seasons. Mm -hmm. um, I also did All American. I did a, in the fourth season of All American. Um, oh, my gosh. I, oh, Mike, the Mike Tyson story. I played Maya Angelou. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> it's true. It's a true story. Like she went to visit him in prison. I thought that was interesting. Um, yeah. and also, I, I guess I could say, you know, if for the third season of BMF that's coming up, I'm uh, in the third season of BMF. Um, Man, so I'm excited. Do they, they got you out here selling dope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be a mama. I'm a hard mama too. But uh, it's going to be interesting. There are a lot of great cameos that they mentioned already it's out there um and so yeah. one of the people that i'm in my scene with is a rapper sweetie um and she's just a sweetie she really is she, oh, she is. and then the thing that i could talk about now during the christmas season is the christmas ringer Ooh. which is right now on bet plus it is a new christmas classic go watch it it's, it's awesome <laughs> Yeah, so so for me, I checked it out. All right, I I actually got an opportunity to watch it. It was okay. a little bit difficult because I'm in Europe, so you know I had to figure <laughs> some stuff out, you know. But I went to the BET Plus app and I watched it, ladies and gentlemen. Especially if you stay side, get the BET uh, Plus app, watch the Christmas Ringer. And speaking of the Christmas Ringer. Let's talk about it. So this is the, the question uh, that I want to ask you. Did you see the strike coming as you were filming this movie? There were, there were, it was it, we filmed it in March. And so there were, yes, the, the, it was out there in the air that it, it that it might be coming. Um, and I know that like, we have to do something called ADR sometimes, which is where you put, um, you put audio in where they need an extra, uh, a line or something so they were just yeah. trying to get everything done because everyone knew that the strike was imminent that it that it might be possibly coming so but we did it we filmed it in atlanta in march um and then i think the, the strike started in june but i mean there were talks talks about it so did you did you now in hindsight do you feel that the did you feel like the process was rushed a bit or did you feel like you you were act, you all were actually able to work everything out in the in perfect timing? I don't know. We were we were able to work it out in perfect timing because, I mean, it was slated for us. to. I think it was like four weeks maybe of filming, um, which is to me, it's it's a it's a, a good long time to do to do a film. Um, and this is actually my first. My second film streaming film like the first film i did was called another tango that was years ago filmed in myrtle beach so this was like my second film and that that one we filmed in less less amount of time than we did the christmas ringer so i think we had, oh, wow. we had full time definitely okay so let me ask you this since this is a christmas themed episode in your expert opinion oh. what makes a christmas classic I think that a Christmas classic would be a film that uh, is family, you know, family oriented um, and it exudes love in some way where um, maybe someone got away from it. And then at the end, they found that love or um, someone wasn't happy with their life and they, you know, screws, you know, weren't happy with their life. And then they found through their past, present and future, you know, that love is out there. So I think love connects the themes of any Christmas classic for sure. Just the, the love and reconciliation. Okay. Okay. Yeah. When, when you first saw the script, did you feel like the Christmas ringer had all of that? 
when I first when I saw the full script, I did because it, it's a story of redemption. And for me, my character, I just think she she loves her family so much and she wants both of her kids, you know, just just to be happy and do well. And it was that basis of that mother's love, you know, that that helped her both of her kids find uh, a common ground at the you know, by the end of the film and to reconcile whatever the, their differences were. I think that mother's love was like right in the middle of that. Okay, so if you could, please explain, of course, without spoilers, because we want the people to go see the movie. Could you explain Miss Anne in the Christmas Ringer? Um, Anne, I play Anne, and I'm the mother of um, two kids. One, she's a, uh, Nicole, she is a famous singer, and my son, Grady, um, because he's the pastor of the church um, that is our family church. And at this, and Anne is just a loving mother who looks out for her kids because she, you know, when she sees somebody trying to, to get at one of her kids, she's like, mm, let me handle this with some class. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to let you know in a classy way that we, we're not playing those games with my kids. There we go. Um, but she's just a loving mom who wants both of her children to be happy and successful. And that's, that's who she is. That's who she is. Okay. And our last conversation, you, you spoke a bit about this role. Of course you couldn't reveal what it was about. And you, right, 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 right. you told me, I really enjoyed this role. How does the role of Anne resonate with Arisha? Oh, because Arisha is that, a loving mother who, you you know, I have one daughter, she's 27, but say something about this, say something to my baby. And I'm not, I'm not a fighter at all, but with a, a, a pinch of class, I'm gonna let you know, no, we're not gonna mess with this one right here, this one right here. But, <laughs> but another thing that was so good, it was just the people on this set were just so amazing. And it felt, it just felt good being in their presence. Uh, we laughed, we had a good time and just grew together. So like when you see a lot of the scenes where, you know, people are having fun together and laughing, like that's how it was on and off, off screen. Um, they were just a great group of people. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and before I get to this question, I'm going to, cause I want to get backstage. All right. I want to, I want to get backstage and, and, you know, see how, what y'all were doing. But, you know, in terms, in terms of the movie, I know we talked about it in the last episode. You said you, you like to watch a game tape, you I know, do. essentially. So when you watch it back, are you, do you feel the same way that you felt when you actually got the role and you actually were in the process? Are you are you still feeling that same love and, and passion for the project after it's over? I am. It's a different type of excitement. Like I did a viewing party um, here when it came out with my friends and some people that I've acted with. And I was at the edge of my seat the whole time because I, I didn't watch it when it came out. I watched it the next night because I wanted to watch it with everybody else. And I was just so excited to see all the parts and pieces come together because you read the words, you see what other people say, but you don't know what it's going to look like or how it's going to come across on the screen. So I was excited. Then um, my daughter, I went to visit her in Atlanta and we had another viewing party and we watched it together. And so the second time I watched it, I was still excited. I wasn't like as, you know, I was like this the first time, but I was a little, you know, mm -hmm. more relaxed and I was, you know, watching like, yeah, yeah. And just seeing the story again. And then I had another, I went to a friend of mine, Melody, who lives in um, York and I went to her house with her family and we did another viewing party. I don't get, I, I don't get too much of, of looking at it because I, I just think that all in all, even though that I'm, you know, I'm in it. Yeah. But all in all, I think it's just a really nice story. And if people watch it and they see that that thread of love, redemption, and you can always come back home, um, I think that that just exudes what Christmas is about anyway. So I, every time I watch it, I still get excited. And my husband always, when I'm watching films, he'll always be looking at me because sometimes I'll be watching the film and I'll be like, you know, and I don't realize I'm watching it like that. He's looking at me and I'm like, what? He said, why are you looking like that? Because I'm just, it just, I get, I, I'm like that with any 
film that I watch. Like I really get into films when I'm watching them. I get, it, you know, pulls me in. So I'm still excited. I um, still wish the best for everybody who was on the cast and the crew. Um, and I, I was doing a post on my Instagram the other day and I got a little emotional, you know, going back through my pictures wow, and wow. posting all that stuff because it just was a, a, a great it was a great time to be on set with such wonderful people, wonderful, loving people. Everybody was just loving. And the girl who played my daughter, like our first day on set was like a heavy day um, because, you know, there's a scene where it's really emotional. That was our first day on set, our first day meeting each other. And it really bonded wow. us. She's such a sweet, sweet spirit, uh, such a sweet, sweet soul. And it just automatically connected us. And so we were, you know, good. I, I check in on her, you know, every now and then. You yeah, know, make yeah. Sure. that's nice. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's just to hear you speak about this experience like this is is actually really interesting because, I mean, on the outside you hear about the industry, but uh -huh. you you don't get a lot of these stories that that tell us, hey, we're humans. We had a great time. I remember when, you know, he. He dipped a hot dog and some mayonnaise. And we was like, man, we don't do that over here. You know, just like silly stuff. You know, it, it's just really nice to hear that you you all had a great experience on set. So speaking of the set. All right. I'm, I'm trying to get my, I'm trying to get backstage now. Okay. All right. Come on. So in this movie, there was some singing going yes. on. Yes. All right. There was some singing. And. Not only was it some singing going on, you had some sangers yes. on on the set. All right, yes. so uh, most uh, most notably, the, the the notable ones. Okay, so you had um, Q from One Twelve. Yes. Kelly Price. Yes. Chrisette Michelle. Yes. And a host of others. Okay, I could go down the list of people who can really get down. Did you all have any jam sessions on, on set? You know, that is a great question because we did not have any jam sessions that I can think about. Not that I was involved in anyway, but I will <laughs> tell you, um, when we would do those scenes where there would be singing, um, sometimes people would sing over their tracks. So Trinise, who plays the lead, she was actually in the second season of American Idol in the top 10. So when I found out she okay, was going to be okay. I was like, oh yeah, I know Trinice. Cause I that I was I was an American Idol fan at that point. Not anymore, but um so <laughs> so I knew Trinice. I knew who she was. And then um then I heard Kelly Price was gonna be in it. And I was like, oh my gosh, Kelly Price. Like Kelly Price is a living legend. And whenever she would sing with her track, Kelly Price, Kelly would always sing live and it would always be on point. She would, and she never sang a song the same way, but she always sang it live over the, the track that was playing. She was amazing. And also Tamika Scott from Escape, she was in it as well. And mm -hmm. Tamika's voice is amazing. You know, when you're in a group, I think, like with three other people, sometimes that voice can get lost, but no, her voice is amazing. And Q Parker, he would sing live on set too. Like um, there's a part in the movie where he's singing a, um, a Christmas song and he sang that live when we were sitting right there. His voice is amazing. Everybody's voice was amazing. Now, Chrisette Michelle did not sing. I wasn't in any scenes with her, but I mean, just to 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 be able to see her. We did ride in the car in our little uh, transport vehicle together. She's very yeah. quiet. She's very quiet. Yes, yes, thank you. You know, <laughs> she was <laughs> um, and then we had the rapper, Akbar V. I think she's known for Maybe Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, something like that. Like she was on that show. If okay, you look yeah. her up, you'll see Akbar. But she was she was hilarious. And you said the story about dipping hot dogs. Like she had this um a sub. Where was that sub for from? The colors of the uh, place are like green and yellow. So I don't know if it was Subway. Squidward. No, it might have been no, I don't think it was Subway because that I don't think it was Subway. But Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> The sub was delicious and she would always, y'all want some of my sub? Y'all can have some if you want some. And I'd be like, and somebody, I think, I don't remember who it was. <laughs> I, was like, I got me a little piece too. I got me, that sub was delicious. And I mean, everybody was just so giving and just, 
it was just an amazing experience. Like I went out, um, the the director, Patricia Cuffey Jones, who is, she has four Christmas movies out there right now that people can watch. Um, and she was amazing. We all went out to lunch together one day. We all had brunch together. It was really nice. And, you know, by the end of brunch, because it was this place, I think it was called Toast. And I was like, let me see what I'm going to order, because, you know, we don't get paid for, you know, usually when you get paid Hello. for a project, you got to wait about 30 days. So I was like, let me hear that. You get that per diem yet? <laughs> Heard them yet? But at the end, um, you know, they're bringing us our check, and of course, she, in a way, she sneakily took it and paid for everybody's meal. I mean, just things like that. That it's like, wow. And every day, she's like, "Y'all want something from Starbucks?" Yeah. Um, I think no, I got this. You know, just just people just being themselves and being nice. Everybody was just so lovely. And Adrian Mark is also saying he. Um, um, saying the Spanish parts, I think, in the in the song, and he's like. Yep. He has a beautiful voice and I never heard him. My first time hearing him sing was actually when I watched the film because, you know, I wasn't in those scenes. So I wasn't on set that day. So I was like, wow. I sent him a message. I was like, Adrian, oh, wow. You know, your voice is lovely. So, yeah, but there's some heavy yeah. hitters. Yeah, so she, so I appreciate you taking me backstage. I, you know, I, I I could feel all of the vibes, you know, right here in this room. You know, I could feel it. The, the funny thing is you talk about um, everyone singing over the live track. Mm -hmm. And when, I, when I'm sitting here thinking, I'm thinking there's some gamesmanship to it, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's people who could go. You know, they could, they could sing. But you're not going to... I'm not gonna be uh, just lip syncing nothing. All right, we coming up here to sing. All right, so I'm sure when the one person saw that person like really getting up there to get to it, they're like, okay, cool. And then you know they do that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I get it. There's some gamesmanship there, but it. I mean, it just sounds like an overall great experience. And I think when you watch the film, you really get to see that cohesion on camera. You know, yeah. you, you really get to see it. So, yeah, it makes it all makes sense, you know, kind of yeah. playing it back. Yeah. So. Yeah. So this is where we're going right now. All right. Yeah. So we're going to play a little game. And uh, I wish I had the saw mask with the Christmas hat, but I but I don't. The saw mask. No. So we, with the Christmas hat. <laughs> <laughs> Contrasting experiences. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So we're going to play a, a little game called This or That. Okay. All right? This okay. or that. Oh, boy. Okay. And this or that, I'm basically going to give you two things. You have to pick one, and then you can just tell us a little bit about why. Okay? Oh. All right. All right. So cue, oh. cue the this or that music. <laughs> all right. So we'll all of this is Christmas themed. All right. So we're going to get into it like this. I'm going to start off nice and easy. All right. This or that, fruit cake or pound cake? Oh, pound cake. I do not like fruit cake <laughs> at all. There's nothing about fruit cake that is delicious to me. I don't know how people eat it. <laughs> Those fruits are so sweet and they don't, don't even taste like fruit. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't get it. Pound cake all day. Easy. All right, that was that was easy. Okay, pumpkin pie or sweet potato pie? Uh, sweet potato pie. Sweet potato pie is a staple. I mean, pumpkin pie is cool, but it it, it has nothing on sweet potato pie. You know, pumpkin pie got that little strange little um that you can't explain. But sweet mm -hmm. potato that is that is a staple. You gotta have some sweet potato pie always. Yeah, pumpkin pie screams gentrification to me. I don't know. Why. <laughs> um. So yeah, we all right. So boom, sweet potato pie. All right, this one is gonna get a little tricky. All right, so hopefully you don't make anyone uh, mad. Ah! Temptations, Silent Night, or This Christmas, Donny Hathaway. Ooh, wow, wow, you did that. Mm -hmm. Ooh. I would have to say, oh, that's the hard. I love In both. My of mind. Them. <laughs> I love both of them, but for me, this Christmas only because I remember when I was younger. It was, it was like when you heard this Christmas on the radio, that triggered that it's now the holidays. It's it's like that's the first song that's played 
right after the on Thanksgiving Day. And then, you know, um, Silent Night is that song that you sing, you know, later on, you know, that puts you back in that smooth mood. But, but this Christmas, that's that's like the signal. Ding, 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 ding. It's the holidays. Yes, so. yes, 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 for sure. All right. So so you pick this Christmas. Christmas, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a tough one. It is tough. That's hear really that, tough. Hear that silent night come ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> <laughs> ooh. <laughs> classic. Both are classics. Yeah. yeah. All right. This this one might be easy. This one might be easy. All right. So I'm I'm gonna give you all right. So this one might so this Christmas, the movie, or Last Christmas with Queen Latifah. It's going to be easy because I haven't seen Last Christmas. Okay. <laughs> I didn't see it. <laughs> That's oh, Let me put that on my list. Last Christmas, Queen Latifah. I'm going to have to check it out. Queen Latifah. I have to it's, check it out. It's, it's a tough one. Really? I'm going to have to All check right. it out. If, if, you see, if you see it before this episode posts, just put put your this or that in the comment section. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to it. All right. Okay. Okay. All right, so this is a quick hitter. This is a quick hitter. So what what is your favorite Christmas movie? My favorite Chris ooh, my favorite Christmas movie. Oh my goodness. I've never thought about like a favorite Christmas movie. I think I like that. Um I think it's called A Christmas Story. Because and it's like the guy, you'll shoot your eye out, Ralphie. Um Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Just because yeah, I, I, I know I've, I usually see that every year and it's always funny. You know, it, it never loses any of its funny. And I like yeah. upbeat stuff too. Like there's some other movies I can name, but you know, they'd be so sad. But I'd say that one. I think it's called A Christmas Story. You'll shoot your it eye is. out. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. <laughs> you shoot your eye out, Ralphie. And then he bang. Right, right. <laughs> Broke his glasses. But I have a new Christmas classic that's my favorite, and that's the Christmas Ringer. Um, y'all should check that out. It's streaming on BET Plus. Yeah, so that's we can do this or that with that one. Um, uh, any other Christmas movie or the Christmas Ringer? Uh, the Christmas Ringer. The Christmas yeah, right. Ringer. Yes. <laughs> a classic. All right. Classic. <laughs> All right. So this is another quick hitter question, and Ooh. and we can we can wrap up uh, okay. after this one. All right. So, do you consider coming to America a as a Christmas film? Mm, I've never considered it a Christmas film. I mean, it's a great film, and it's around the holidays, and it does have Christmas in it. But no, I've never, I, you know, that's a good question. I've never thought of coming to America as a Christmas film. It's classic. It's classic. Yeah, because. <laughs> because of the impact of the Christmas period w within uh, the movie, it really, it puts you into December, you know, yeah. like, I, I don't know, like that, that scene inside the house, you know, him chasing yeah. her on the train. Yeah, That's, you know, because it's cold, you know, snow. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, that's that's definitely something to consider. Now, what I wish is like you know, because usually during the Christmas holidays they start playing these Christmas movies over and over and over and over again. Yeah, coming to America is not one that they play like that, and maybe they should. You know, uh. yeah, you know, I'm just I'm just kind of putting it out there. All right, I'm just kind of putting it out there, putting my little scene right. on. I, it, I I just thought about it. You know, I was just sitting here like, hmm. <laughs> I get the Christmas spirit when I see this for some reason. I don't know why, but uh, right, right. but yes. So, all right. So, if if you could tell uh, any of our listeners about mm -hmm. the Christmas Ringer, mm -hmm. what would you want to tell them? I would tell them that it's a, a movie about a family um, when sometimes someone might lose their way in the family and might even come back for ulterior motives but then find themselves once again and are welcomed back. Um, like it's a true story of redemption and love. It's about love and redemption. And if you want something that's gonna make you feel good, um, then check out The Christmas Ringer because I think you're gonna love it. And if you want to hear some good singing, check it out. <laughs> Most There definitely. you go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, listen, I already have my subscription to BET Plus. If you don't have one already, 
Go ahead and get yours. The Christmas Ringer is live. And before we wrap up, tell us what's next. Oh, my goodness. That's that's a great question. Now that the uh, the strike is over, you know, I've got BMF coming up in March. But now that the strike is over, this is the the quiet part of the season. So I'm just looking forward to great things happening when the when everything opens back up in January, February. So, you know, what's next for me is I'm going to be a series regular in a, in a very popular show on a very popular TV network. I'm putting that out there. Yes. <laughs> spirit Lock fingers oh, there we go. <laughs> spirit fingers it's already out there so I know we've done our manifestation before I know we've done it before but things have changed you you are now uh, 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 free essentially <laughs> <laughs> have those manifestations changed since we spoke the last time um I don't think so I'm you know, because my goal with my career is to continue to um, be involved in content that is uplifting and inspirational and that allows to tell stories of those persons that are underrepresented in underrepresented communities. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so like I said, series regular on a popular show on a popular TV network and in a blockbuster film. I still would love to do Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't even know if they're doing that anymore, but I'm, I'm putting it out there still. Guardians of the Galaxy. Because <laughs> I love that franchise. It's my favorite. Yeah, I just, I just actually just watched the last movie um, a couple months ago. No, actually, a month ago when I, I flew back home. I mean, I flew back here. <laughs> so I love yeah. it. I love it. Yeah, it was a great movie. All of it. Good stuff. All right, all right. So listen, I, I promised Miss Connor Fryson that I wouldn't hold her a long time because, you know, we got Christmas stuff we need to do. You know yeah. what I mean? You know, yeah. get rapping, you know, a little, little hot chocolate, you know, all that type of stuff. So uh, once again, I know we've done this before. Share your socials and then we'll oh. wrap up. Okay, uh, Instagram, Arisha is a star. Um, Facebook, Arisha Connor. X, Arisha Connor. Threads, <laughs> Arisha Connor. Um, TikTok, Arisha. I think it's Arisha is a star on TikTok. And the reason it's Arisha is a star, it would be Arisha Connor, but someone tried to hijack my page. So I, that's why I changed those. And tried things. to charge you for it, right? Yes. Oh my gosh, I was so mad. Told me I'm. I'm for a hundred dollars, I was like, no, that's all right. I got this. Arisha is a star. It'll be all yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. Why? That is, yeah. I mean, I've, I've actually heard that. And then just imagine, just imagine if you, you know, you got that, that Emmy award. Right. And then oh, somebody no. like quick, quickly took your name. was like, yeah, you know, 10 G's. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> you know, so that's why, you know, I know they, I know a lot of people, um, talk about not paying for that check but if you i don't have a check right now i had it for a second because i needed to ask a question and the only way i could get in contact with support was to buy the little check and i got my question answered so i let it go but wow. it, it puts an extra security on your account when you have it because you can talk to support you can put some extra um securities in place you know when you have that check so it is what it is you know <laughs> yeah, yeah i mean i mean listen if you I mean, when you talk about the subscriptions we have, yeah. I mean, it's not that bad of an investment. I mean, you know, because yeah. you added stuff, some added protections on your account. So, yeah, I considered it as well. You know, just kind of asking people to come to the show. I think it's a lot easier. You know, yeah. if they see that check, like, oh, okay, <laughs> right? It really is. People are like, oh, like somebody inboxed me, girl, congratulations! I see you got a check. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, all right, so listen, uh we 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 we've done it again. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully you all are enjoying this Christmas special. We this is the reason for the season. The Christmas ringer is out on BET Plus. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, just give another set of hand claps for Miss Arisha Connor Fries. All right, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, this is a uh, yeah. This is 
this is what we've all been waiting for when she told me about this uh this movie uh away from the camera i was like oh man i can't wait i can't wait i, w- I was pumped up for you to, to be able to see it so yes the christmas ringer is out ladies and gentlemen and yeah there you have it hey you know how we do it when we get out of the episode it costs nothing to be good to someone be good to someone today i'm your host rob fields she's arisha kind of arisha the star <laughs> and merry christmas merry christmas peace <laughs>